three, two, Hi, I'm Andy from Renovate Innovate. Today we've got a special guest. We've got Nigel from DIY Daddy. We'll be doing an interview all about common DIY mistakes. Let's get on with it. Let's get cracking. Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to the channel. Today we've got a special guest. We've got Nigel, also known as DIY Daddy. Hello, Nigel, thanks for joining us. Hi, Andy, how are you? Oh, brilliant, thanks. Could you just tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, my name's Nigel. I uh, have a blog called DIY Daddy, which um, gives loads of DIY tips and tricks. I've been a painter and decorator for uh, well over 20 years, and more than years than I care to mention. Um, and I'm married with five children, and I live in South Wales in Cardiff. So Nigel, the uh, purpose of today's video is we'll be talking about common DIY mistakes and where people go wrong, and hopefully with this little chat we'll be able to steer people in the right direction and help them not make those mistakes that they normally make. And uh, the first question I've got is not, un is not understanding materials and tools. Um, have you got anything to say about that, where people go wrong? Not understanding materials and tools. I think uh, with materials, they, ought to, they definitely, certainly with paint and decorating, you should be looking at what you're buying yeah. and then looking at the instructions. Many people, for instance, with wallpaper, will just go out and buy a roll of wallpaper and think that's easy, just slap it up on the wall and away you go. But, you know, there's a little bit more to it than that. And, and make sure you read the instructions fully. For instance, a lot of wallpapers nowadays, they some are paste on the wall, that's some are paste true. the paper. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's important that you know you, you know what you're doing beforehand. And tools, um, make sure you get the right tool to do the right job. Yeah. Um, and absolutely vital. And don't go buy expensive tools. Um, if if all it's going to do is sit in your shed for the next six months, um, renting would be a good idea. And that on that basis as well. Yeah. Um, but make sure you get the right tool. And if it means go on YouTube or um, and check out what you need to do the job. Um. Giving yourself enough time, that's, uh, that's something that I, I find DIYs don't, aren't able to do. If they get a good job, if they don't give themselves enough time, do you think that's... I think most DIY sort of, they, they decide to take on a, a job, whatever it may be, and it's got to be finished quickly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's really important that if it takes you two days to do it or two... Say you're working in the day, I don't know, and you're doing it at night time. If it takes you a couple of nights to do it, then then take a couple of nights to do it. Yeah. There's no rush, it's you know, um, but at least then you'll get it perfect and yeah. you'll get it right. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, with the you. DIY, it, it seems to be you know, bought paint, got roller, bum 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 bum, um, or whatever whatever they're doing. You know. Do you think sometimes it's because people stretch themselves too far or resist, you know, hiring a, a builder or a professional? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, yeah, there's, there's got to be a time um, where you, you have to say to yourself, I'm not really capable of this and I need somebody else to do it. Uh, I've just, we've just recently bought a new home, which I'm gutting. And there are jobs in there that I won't do. Um, for the simple reason, I'm not very good at them. Right. And I know I'm not good at them. And, um, and I, for a plastering is a good example. I can't plaster to save my life. Oh, well, um, that's my trade, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there are times that it's worth paying the money out to get somebody in to get the job you want, the finished the finish look. Yeah, yeah, knowing your limits is, is important Absolutely. there, isn't it? Knowing yeah. limits, yeah. So there are many DIYers out there that give up partway through a job. And being honest, has that ever happened to you? Partway through a job, you've just thrown a towel in or felt like it? Yes. Oh, nice. Um, I, I, there's one particular customer of mine, and um, she wanted the hall, landing, and stairs all painted, but then she wanted stripes uh, of paint painted on uh, of the wall oh. going up the stairs and all over. I realised that if we did all the same size stripe, it would look like prison, so we couldn't do that. So we had to sort of break it up, and I had to sort of create... I think I created seven a seven row of um, stripes, different sizes. I was at a point where I don't want to do this no more. Yeah, it's yeah. doing my head. Do I need the money that badly? No, I don't. Uh, 
I just want to go, if any advice I'd give to a DIYer is if you're struggling with it, just come away from it and then have a think about what you're doing, but don't go back to it straight away. Just leave it yeah. and then go back when you're in a better frame of mind and you've got a better idea of what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, well, that's great advice. Let's talk about tools. Um, quality of tools, um, you know, expensive tools versus cheap tools, what to buy, what advice do you give on for DIYers on buying tools? Where do you stand on that? Um, I'd always, I always, I always buy quality tools. Yeah. I don't. I, it's it's false economy to buy cheap tools. Mm. They don't they don't do the job you want them to do. They won't last as long. And a number of my tools I've probably had twenty years because I've I've bought good quality tools to begin with, yeah. and they're still going strong now to this day. And that's power tools, all sorts of things, really. Um, but it's just about buying a good make, and that they will do the job better for you without question. There's there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I think you get, I, I get used to certain tools as well. It's a shame when they do finally break, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it you is. Know? Yeah. yeah, you get attached to them, don't you? Yeah. You do get attached to them, yeah. We've done a little video um, explaining my essential tools for my essential toolkit. And um, right. yeah, there are some quirky tools that I like to use and can't work without, but what, what, what are the tools you can't work without? Um, I haven't got any real real tools that I can't work yeah. without. But one thing that I really struggle to do anything is I, when I'm painting outside, I have a set of ladders which are 20 years old. Uh, yeah. They're aluminium one. Yep. Um, I've also got a number of other ladders which are newer. Um, but I always go back to these one set of ladders. For some reason, I know what they're capable of and I'm more Safe. comfortable on them yeah. than anything else. I've also got a set of ladders, aluminium ladders that are 20 plus years old and paint kettles just fit just nice on them. So yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, I, I don't know, I just, I know what they're going to do. So. Uh, and I've got ones and they, I've never, I, I use them, I have to use them on occasions, but I'm never as comfortable on them as I am on these old ones. What do you think is the most important thing um, about every DIY job that you do? in your own home? What, what's, not for your customers, but for yourself, what's the most important thing there? It's got to be perfect for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. And if I had to do it three times, then that's what I would do until it's exactly as I want it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is where we're, where, where we're moving now, and I'm in the process of starting all that. I know that everything I do has got to be dead right, and I've got to, Whatever I buy as well, material-wise, it's, it's got to be exactly as I want it um, for, me, for me personally, yeah. But I do try and translate that when I'm working for other people as well, yeah. that I try and get it as perfect as possible. Yeah, yeah, of course. And buying the best, best of the best material, I suppose. And yeah. yeah, buying best materials is, is, is I think, vital to you, to you get the best finish and then getting the, getting the best equipment as well to do the job, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's all part and parcel. It's, which is where DIYers always fall down. I mean, especially with paint, there's so much cheap paint out there. Yeah. But, you know, for the extra, I don't know, £10 a tin or whatever it may be, um, go and buy a quality brand. Yeah, um, you will see, You will see the difference and you won't be putting water on the wall because a lot of the cheaper ones are so runny and they, it goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So just, just buy, buy a quality brand and, and you, will, you will enjoy it more as well from that as well if you're buying a better paint that's true and put it you will enjoy doing it more because it'll look better when you get to the end yeah you get a better experience for the whole thing don't you as, as a, yeah yeah so it'll encourage a diy to, to to try something else and they might get braver and try something a bit more difficult i don't know you know okay then nigel so what would you say are your top three tips to give to a diy -er and oh i think if you're a diy -er and you're taking on a painter and decorating job my top three tips would be plenty of preparation, making sure everything is perfect before you start anything. Yep. Use quality products and equipment yep. every time. Uh, don't, don't cut corners on cost. It's not worth it. And finally, take your time. There's no rush. Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Um, lots, of, lots of tips and advice we've got there. And I'd just like to thank you for joining us on our channel. And... Uh, if you could just tell us where we can find you and all your advice online, that'd be great. 
you can find me on uh, DIY Daddy blog, which yeah. is my main uh, platform. I'm also on, obviously, all the social media channels, such as Instagram as DIY Nige, yeah. um, and so on on Twitter, Facebook, etc. Well, thank you very much, Nige. Thank you for your time and all the advice. We'll make sure that people can find you in the description below. We'll put some links in there. And if you've got any of your own DIY disasters that people can learn from, just pop them in the comments below. That'll be great. And if you've liked this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, hit that notification bell. You'll get notifications of all the amazing things we've got on our channel. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Woohoo!